Booktown Festival in Clunes, Australia. Pro Specivara preserves crop and animal varieties. Canadian Tenjang introduces Korean cooking to the world. A Korean soprano becomes a prima donna. A boxing show to promote racial harmony. Hello, welcome to Going Global. I'm your host, Chong Semi. The weather is getting hotter these days with summer just around the corner, and I'm sure many of you are desperate for a vacation. And on an island in Mexico, a very unique bar has opened. It's the world's first underwater bar that doesn't sell drinks but sells scented oxygen. People can hang out underwater while wearing a helmet that releases mint or citrus scented oxygen. How cool is that? I think it will be a great place to visit for a unique summer vacation. Now here's our first story of the day. In a small and quiet town in Australia called Clunes, a special festival attracts a lot of tourists from all around the world every year around the month of May. People are said to visit the town for none other than books. Let's take a look. This is Clunes, a small town in Australia that's about two hours away by car from Melbourne City. A quiet place with a total population of around 1,600, the town is crowded with more people than usual today. People stop by to browse through the books that are on display here. The whole town has transformed into a library. I've spent too much money on books today. Maybe 12 so far, 13, but I still haven't seen half of it yet, so I'm still looking and I'll probably end up with 30. <laughs> Clunes was a town that was losing its vitality just until eight years ago when the Booktown Festival first began. Discovery of gold in the 19th century boosted the town's population to nearly 6,000, but after the gold mines closed, it dropped to just around 1,000. As residents were discussing ways to revitalize the town, they realized that there was no town in Australia that held book festivals. After many trials and difficulties, the first Clunes Booktown Festival was successfully held in May of 2007, attracting more than 5,000 tourists. We had our first festival, and on that festival, so many people came that we ran out of money and food and water and electricity. There was just nothing in the town anymore. So we decided, well, this was a good idea, and we got a bit more organised and a bit structured. The Clunes Booktown Festival has now become Australia's largest book trading event with over 20,000 visitors every year. The festival also helped revitalize the town's stagnant local businesses. A very positive event and, and quite a unique event in Australia. So uh, there's no reason for it not to continue and I hope it goes on for many years. At this year's festival, Korean author Hwang Sun Mi was invited for the first time to share her works with the visitors, including her best known story, The Hand Who Dreamed She Could Fly. The Clunes Booktown Festival now makes a profit of $5.2 million each year. The residents' efforts to revive their town with a book festival are doing wonders to the community and the economy. It's amazing to see how the whole town transforms itself into a huge library during the festival. Clunes is definitely a place to visit when you're traveling to Australia. Now our next story today comes from Switzerland. Every early May, a special seedling market is held in a place called Wildeck in Switzerland. And about 12,000 people visit this two-day market. So what's special about it? Let's take a look. A market is open at an old castle site located far from the village. Various kinds of vegetable seeds and plants are being sold at the market. Heavy rain does not keep the visitors from coming. Pro Specie Rara is a non-profit foundation dedicated to the preservation of the genetic diversity of plants and animals in Switzerland. Founded in 1982, Pro Specie Rara has been encouraging the breeding and cultivation of traditional crops. The Vildex Seedlings Market is a result of the Foundation's efforts. 
From ugly shaped potatoes that lost their marketability to tomatoes that quickly go soft but taste good, the market sells seeds for all kinds of vegetables. Catherine Loy has been a merchant at the Vildeck Market for 12 years, and this year she brought 26 kinds of tomatoes to sell. There are more than 300 varieties of tomatoes confirmed just in Switzerland. Geschmack, die sind uh, geschmacksintensiver und uh, die Vielfalt ist verloren gegangen. Es gab nur noch eine Sorte Tomate, eine gleichmäßig große rote. Jetzt haben wir alle Farben. Nearly 12,000 people visit the two-day Vildeg Crowspecierauer Market held in early May every year. Apart from Vildeg, there are five more places in Switzerland that open a seedlings market. Ja, Dorfverbundener Mensch und finde, man soll erhalten, vor allem in, in der Schweiz, so mal erhalten, was, was da war mal. <laughs> this is the Seedlings Garden at the head office of Pro Specie Rara located in Basel. Various native species discovered by about 20 employees of the foundation are being grown here. Pro Specie Rara also maintains a seed library that has over 1,500 different native seeds. Anyone who is interested in growing native plants can borrow the seeds from the library and return them after harvest. Nicht genug Platz haben, um alles selber anzubauen und zu vermehren. Ähm, schicken uns dann einfach Privatpersonen, also bauen das an und schicken einfach uns ihr Saatgut dazu. Und sie helfen uns zu vermehren, also um, um die Saatgut. There are more than 10,000 supporters who share the purpose of the foundation. About 400 of them are actively participating in plant breeding through the seed library, and around 2,000 of them are raising animals like chickens, pigs, and goats. For the last 30 years or so, Pro Specie Rara was able to save 1,500 varieties of native plants and 29 species of animals that were considered endangered. The climate changes, or a new Schädling comes, a new Pflanzenvirus comes, that then the possibility that somewhere with these many sorts Sorten dabei sind, die besser mit dem umgehen können, ja, ist eigentlich eine Sicherheit. Die Sicherheit ist größer, je mehr verschiedene Sorten wir haben. Pro Specie Rara has helped bring back native plants and animals that were once endangered. The Foundation's efforts are now enriching the lives of people in Switzerland. Now here's our next story. A woman from Canada has gone beyond just enjoying Korean cuisine. She's now introducing easy Korean cooking and recipes on YouTube. Her uploaded clips were even aired on a TV channel in Toronto. Let's find out about this special Korean cooking show. A Korean pancake mix stirred with green onions and red peppers. The batter is fried on the pan and becomes a delicious paja or green onion pancake. From how to cook to how to eat, the show is all about introducing easy Korean home cooking. Originally a Korean cooking show on YouTube, Canadian Tenjang aired its episodes early this year on a paid channel in Canada called Bell Local, meeting viewers of Toronto City for a month. It could sort of open a window to people who have always wanted to cook it in their own homes and then um, be a really good like sort of way for them to learn how to do that. The person behind Canadian Tenjang is Cindy Zimmer, who created the show. She worked as an English teacher in Korea for three years. From January last year, she started a YouTube channel to introduce people to Korean cuisine. She wanted to share with other Canadians the diversity of traditional Korean foods, such as kimchi stew, bulgogi, and spicy stir-fried chicken. For a lot of people, it's still exotic, so I was just um, trying to make it uh, friendly to people um, and show how easy it is to make a lot of dishes. Canadian Tenjang now has more than 16 episodes uploaded on YouTube. Even Korean Canadians and other overseas Koreans follow Cindy's easy recipes. Cindy also posts her recipes on an online Hallyu magazine that she created four years ago. While she was living in Korea, Cindy fell in love with Korean indie music. Recently, she even participated in an event that introduced Korean indie bands to young Canadians. 
Cindy Zimmer's understanding of Korean culture through food and music has made her a true How You messenger and a Canadian who knows about Korea more than Koreans. Understanding Korean culture properly and introducing it to other people, Cindy Zimmer's passion and efforts are just remarkable. Let's hope she continues to be active as a true Hallyu messenger for a long time. Now, there are a lot of world-renowned Korean opera singers, such as Cho Soo-mi and Hong Hye-kyung. Another soprano singer from Korea has proved herself on the European stage and is now being recognized as a prima donna. Let's meet soprano Cho Sun-hyung, who is actively performing in Germany and other European countries. This is a historic opera house in Baden-Baden, a city in southwestern Germany. The so-called festival house is filled with a beautiful aria. The prima donna on stage hits the high notes smoothly. She is soprano Chu Sun-hyung, who actively performs in Germany and other European countries. Sie war einfach so präsent, einerseits so, so lieblich und so verletzlich und andererseits so unheimlich stark einfach. Einfach so ein wundervoll, wahnsinniges Auftreten. Cho loved singing since she was a child. Singing along to children's songs even helped her start speaking. After graduating from a music college in Korea in 2003, she went to further her studies in Italy. As an opera singer, she wants to sing for the rest of her life. She started gaining recognition in Europe for her natural vocal range and her gripping expressions. She received first prizes in world-renowned singing competitions, such as the Bilbao International Singing Competition in Spain and the International Singing Competition in Parma, Italy. Die große Begabung bei Elisa ist natürlich der Stimmumfang. Der Stimmumfang ist sehr, sehr groß und vor allen Dingen durch die Lagen mit einer großen lyrischen Durchschlagskraft gegeben, sodass sie eben wirklich eine Vielzahl von Komponisten bedienen kann. Although Cho was recognized for her singing, it was hard for a soprano from Asia to perform the heroine of an opera. She was often told that her appearance didn't suit the heroine and was rejected many times. But an opera house in Frankfurt contacted her first. She was given the opportunity to perform the lead role twice in a row, which is unusual for an Asian singer. Even after her first lead role performance, Cho continued to practice and make improvements. She visited her advisor and professor who lives in Italy to receive lessons whenever she could. To develop and improve her expressions, she continued to listen to music even while taking a rest. It was because she wanted to show better performance to the people who believed in her. As a world-class prima donna, soprano Cho Sun-hyung says the most exciting moment for her is when she sings on stage. She continues to sing today with all her heart, comforting people with her voice. Now here's our last story of the day. Recently in the United States, race riots broke out in the city of Baltimore. For many, they were a reminder of the Korean stores that were looted and vandalized in the 1992 Los Angeles riots. It's been a long time since the LA riots, but a special boxing show has been taking place every year in LA to promote racial harmony. Let's take a look. Two boxers from different backgrounds are ready to fight in the ring. As soon as the bell rings, a fierce battle begins. This is the 22nd April 29th Riot Memorial Racial Harmony Boxing Show. Korean American Kim Jin Han took the winning trophy home this year in the 73 kilogram weight class. I'm very happy. All that hard work that I put in finally came off, and I actually, you know, took the win today. 
The boxing show first began to commemorate the Los Angeles riots of April of 1992 and promote friendship through sports. This year's event had 15 African American and Latin American boxers and one Korean American compete in eight different weight divisions. Isn't it to help unite everybody together, besides, regardless of racial, racial ethnicity, or ethnicity or anything like that? You know, we all are one big happy family for a little while. I feel. I don't <laughs> the April 29 Riot Memorial Racial Harmony Boxing Show is now in its 20th year, but it was almost unable to make it this year. Former boxer Chung Wang Gi, who has been leading the event from the very beginning, was diagnosed with stage 4 gastric cancer, and the main host position became vacant. But after hearing Chung's unfortunate news, the Korean community gathered together to organize and host the show. 다음에는 이렇게 젊은 권투 선수들 아니면은 어 이렇게 커뮤니티 봉사하시는 분들 그런 그런 분들이 이렇게 같이 어 팀으로 계속 이어져 가지고 이게 매년마다 진행이 계속 됐으면 좋겠어요. A boxing show to promote racial harmony. The competitors come from different backgrounds, but the sweat they share in the ring is the same. I hope you enjoy the stories we shared today on Going Global. Not long after Nepal was hit by a massive earthquake, neighboring country India suffered from a heat wave of over 45 degrees Celsius that led to soaring death toll. The worst heat wave in 58 years has killed more than 500 people as of mid-April. The world is in pain with series of abnormal climate, conflicts and famine hitting the globe and it makes us ponder whether they were triggered by human selfishness and greed. Everyone Global will be back next week with more fascinating and exciting stories. Thank you for watching.